third you board it. member. Think about him, but it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun to watch. We got three. We got four. Of them. Yeah. Okay, we are back, and can I have a motion and a second to adjourn closed session? So moved. Thank you. Second. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you. Vote by board members. Aye. 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 And the time is 7 p.m. Okay, we are back in open session. It is 7 p.m. And tonight we have Alex Gao from Dunn Elementary School who will lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alex. By the way, Alex is a fifth grader at Dunn. Okay, let's see. Dr. Avila, report out of closed session, please. Thank you, President Martinez. The Board of Education took action to approve an agreement uh, settling United States District Court case number 516-CV-01954, JAK-ASP, in exchange for a release of all claims against the district. The roll call vote was unanimous. The Board of Education accepted the administrative appointment of Vince Rollins, uh, middle school principal, Frisbee Middle School. The roll call vote was unanimous. And the Board of Education accepted the administrative appointment of Latanya Greer, elementary principal, Trapp Elementary School. The roll call vote was unanimous. <coughs> Thank you, Dr. Avila. Okay, uh, next is adoption of the agenda. Can I have a motion and a second, please? So moved. Second. Thank you. Okay, vote by board members. Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, we have no presentations. Um, do we have any public comment, Dr. Avila, on not on the items not on the agenda? We do. We have uh, Paula Bailey. Welcome. Good evening, Good board evening. president, evening. board superintendent. So tonight I am coming forth, which is why I put two in there, because I'm representing actually four students. Um, to kind of bring an awareness to think of yourself in another individual's school and, and another individual's shoes. So I'm asking you to put yourself in the place of a student that could come from one of many situations. The student who at one time was living with their biological parent who is now living with somebody else. A student who may now live in foster care. A student for many situations may never know why they're in the position they're in and no longer live where they were and what happened. Never had the chance to say goodbye to anybody. Thinking of that student and how they make attachments and they find security when they've lost everything that they knew and now they're in another situation. It's my understanding we have a significant number of Foster students and McKinney Vento students in our district. With new marketing places going up, rent prices are going to go up. So we may see an increase in that. We don't know. So where I'm going with this is we send our kids to school. We want them to feel safe. We want them to have that one attachment to where they can feel safe to talk to that person. Typically, it's their teacher, but those change every year. Sometimes teachers leave more frequently. A lot of times it may become that administrator. So what I'm asking is look at that piece and in our middle schools our PBIS administrators are ones that really get to know our kiddos. And when we're looking at moving administrators around from one school to another, let's have that opportunity for them to process that goodbye to that person. I'm going here, I'm not just leaving you to where I know our middle schools have all changed administrators. You know, I told my daughter, oh, guess what? By the way, the principal you had last year that you've come to know and love isn't gonna be there. She's like, but I didn't even get to say goodbye. How come we didn't have that time? 
So if that is something that you're looking at doing in upcoming school years, think about that kiddo who that may be the only attachment that they had. I don't know how many of you are familiar with what's called the ACEs, Adverse Childhood um, Experiences. And they, those kiddos, those experiences, take on what their trajectory is in life. And they need that one person, you know, there to help them change that path. And what if it was that individual they never got to say goodbye to when that could have been arranged? You know, so stuff happens, I get it. But if in any way possible, think of those kids that could be in many situations, including our kiddos that live with their bio parents that may have issues at home and found that safe place. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Avila? We have no more not on the agenda. Okay. We are on comments, public comments on agenda items. Any person wishing to speak on any item on the agenda will be granted three minutes. We have Paula Bailey. Okay. I think she said she put in two slips, so she got the same time. Because she went out. Okay. That's all we have. Okay. If she shows up, we'll add her to rotation. Okay, Association uh, Executive Board Members, time for your comments. Rialto Education Association. California School Employees Association. Communication Workers of America. Rialto School Managers Association. Here, crickets. <laughs> well, it is vacation. <laughs> it is. All right. Uh, comments from the superintendent. Thank you, uh, President Martinez. Um, just want to report out on day one of our two day uh, strategic summer symposium, where our 190 or so uh, members of our management team and confidential staff uh, gathered at Rialto Middle School to review part of last year and then to introduce uh, information presentations for this coming year. Our theme for this particular year is kindness. We are taking up Rialto's challenge to start a chain reaction. This is in connection to uh, Rachel's challenge. Rachel was the first uh, victim of the Columbine massacre and her father uh, started uh, a movement on her behalf after discovering a lot about his daughter after she passed. And she had been keeping a journal and I can't give you the details because we have Rachel's uh, dad, uh, Mr. Scott, coming in tomorrow for day two to take us through uh, his journey and his experience as uh, the fa Rachel's father and share uh, the challenge uh, that came from tragedy. Um, today we had asked uh, management to <coughs> wear shirts that promoted positive messages, whether respect, kindness, um, whatever they felt was positive because as a district, we still have some pain that we're going through as a district. Pains that in some cases interfere with the right decisions that we should be making to move us forward. That pains that continue to be part of, I don't know if the right word is the baggage that we continue to carry with us and does not allow us the freedom and liberty to really thrive wounds. in some cases. Wounds. They're wounds that continue, that, that haven't healed and that are reopened from time to time. And so the, the structure around day one and two is to find ways to let certain things go, to find uh, healing individually because as a district, keep in mind that we are uh, an orga uh, organism, and as a district, we have uh, a collective pain 
that, again, does not allow us to go in certain positive directions that we should be going in because there's still uh, these wounds uh, still exist. So I'm challenging our team to do a lot of self-reflection and to be willing and able to let things that should not be a part of the decision-making process uh, go because it not only clouds uh, their decisions, but it impacts decisions as a district. And so we uh, promoted what we really want, the direction we want to go in. And this is what I was uh, making last night at midnight. I had to go to Michael's uh, to buy the letters and the shirt separately because I just had not had time to go and find something that I felt would convey uh, the message that we were asking others to uh, to share. You did that very well. Yeah. <laughs> They're all nice and straight and lined up. <laughs> and as part of our challenge, and we'll be learning a little bit more about this, is that we are going to do it through a journal. And so we had money donated for us to purchase a journal for each of our administrators and one for each of our board members. And the challenge is going to be to document experiences where each of us is promoting kindness or when someone is being kind to us so that at the end of the year we can have a story to tell about whether or not we are healthier as an organization or as individuals or not based on how many entries or the content of the entries. It's a private journal that doesn't have to be shared. Uh, the challenge is to, to write it down because we know that through the writing process, uh, it stimulates a lot of cognitive skills, but also helps us release a lot of our uh, inhibitions and frustrations or pains that we may have because we're able to let them out. And tomorrow is going to be a little different from today. Today was a lot of information there was uh, a revelation of sorts that has really impacted or will impact the title of Dr. McDuffie. We know his title is lengthy to begin with, Lead Strategic Agents, Strategics, Congruence, and Social Justice, but some staff members have recommended that we add singer and dancer and performer to his title <laughs> because he let us see a side of him that many many folks had not seen before. But he also uh, recited the <coughs> drum major speech by Dr. King, where if you had closed your eyes, you would have thought that it was Dr. King reciting the speech. Memorize verbatim, very powerful. He gave us context about his childhood and the pains that he went through being called certain words, being tagged certain things and how he was attached and became attached to uh, Dr. King and the message that uh, he shared with the world. And then he recited uh, the drum major uh, speech for us. So that kind of set the tone for what we expect uh, tomorrow. And tomorrow is going to be presentations by different uh, unit members on things that we need to do for this coming year, but also it's going to be really an opening up of uh, some of our individual pains and then having the opportunity to listen to Mr. Scott, who now the, the foundation does presentations throughout the world in many different countries because of the power behind uh, the challenge of uh, starting a chain reaction around kindness. Um, Rachel believed that if each of us were just kind to one person and then that person kind to another person, that eventually the world would be filled with kind people. Mm -hmm. And that's the challenge. And so that's the challenge that I believe is very appropriate right now for our school district. We know that we have, we're in a very different position from where we were you know, three years ago. There's still a lot of areas for improvement and for growth, but I believe that as we release some of our, um, our pains, that we'll be able to uh, grow by leaps and bounds once we're able to, to free ourselves from uh, those uh, chains, those internal chains that keep us uh, tethered to, to our past. So with that, uh, I strongly invite uh, the board uh, 
uh, as I have before, to join us tomorrow if your time only allows for the time when uh, Mr. Scott will be there. That would be really appreciated because uh, I've heard him speak before, and if it holds true, it's going to be a very powerful presentation that, that he has. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Abel. <laughs> okay, and we will begin our comments uh, from board members with board member Ayala. Thank you, President Martinez. Uh, tonight, <coughs> I'd like to share a few words on uh, spending quality time with our families. That can be defined in many ways, but the opportunities exist now because we have uh, good weather, other, other than being warm. Uh, we have the opportunities because we're, we're not in school. People have vacation coming up. But along with that comes other challenges. Uh, often it's said that if you don't paint the picture before you go somewhere, you could disappoint somebody. And even though we live with each other on a daily basis, <clears throat> we, we do our own thing. But when you're traveling with somebody, uh, it's kind of close knit. Uh, and you don't have those opportunities to break away. And so, <clears throat> It is important to explore our world. It really is. You can't stay on that couch all the time. But as our families take their children to resorts, take them to camping, take them to the beach, there can be good times and bad times. Please, 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 and I'm saying this to our families out there, to, uh, uh, to think about the bad things that can come up and how you're going to react to those bad things. Because you don't have to. You can take control of your situation. <clears throat> and so when you go into a restaurant and somebody orders the wrong thing and you take it out on, on the waitress or something, uh, you know, you can educate your children to say, hey, it's not a perfect world. Uh, let's give them an opportunity to do it right. But if they don't do it right, that's OK. You know, maybe we'll go elsewhere some other time. But handle it with diplomacy. Don't ruin the vacation. Don't ruin that quality time. But if you paint that picture before you go and you tell your children, there's going to be some challenges here. We're going to do some arguing. We're going to have this and that. It's not all going to be just a happy-go-lucky trip where everybody is just smiles on their faces. It's, you know, we're going to work through this. But we're going to learn together how to, how to travel. And it could be just two people or it could be, you know, the whole family. But <clears throat> the bottom line is you find those times to correct things. Find that secluded area to have that conversation with the individual that you need to get a point across. Don't publicly embarrass one another because you see that that happens a lot. And I know I'm kind of lecturing here, but it, it happens so many times with our kids and their parents. Then they come back to go to school, and, and, and they're not happy. We want happy people here in Rialto. So it's not what is said. It's how it's said. And you know, people remember that. It's not what is said. It's how it's said. And then on top of that, Winning the argument is not as important as winning the relationship. Okay, I, I wanted to end with that. And I hope uh, somebody out there who's thinking about going to the beach or the mountains or just out to dinner thinks about what happened last time. Don't, make, don't repeat those mistakes. Make a positive venture out of this. Enjoy your vacation, and uh, you'll get some benefits when you get back. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Ayala. Board Member Walker, Ms. Um, Walker. Thank you. I um, just want to say thank you um, uh, for the invitation for the strategic um, days. I, unfortunately, because the summer is, you know, so we're like, oh, summer relax. For me, my summer is really busy because during the regular year, I'm doing regular meetings on my job, you know, that kind of thing. But during the summer, I actually get to lead and run our internship for my foundation, um, which has me, you know, when you're working with college students handful of them. <laughs> it's very interesting and tiring. 
Um, so we've got some big projects coming in the next couple of weeks. So I probably am not going to be able to come um, through. Um, sad about it, though. Um, so, and then the other thing I'd just like to say for all of those, you, I missed my board meeting last um, last month, the end of the month. Um, I was away at the conference, the TLC conference, with many of our um, staff and and um, and and. <coughs> staff and faculty as well. Had a great time, learned a lot of information, um, and I know other people from the district that did it as well. Look forward to hopefully doing some kind of debrief um, too, just kind of look at what what they learned and what we learned there to help, to help our district as well. Um, but the biggest thing is thank you for the birthday wishes. I saw the video, the song, <laughs> the cake, and I was sad because I also got sick while I was there, so I had lost my voice. I couldn't even talk on my birthday or anything so I was like a mime you know um, that week uh, but I was so excited to see you thank you for said everybody for the, the cake I read my email um, but for the wishes and everything um, from there so although I wasn't here I appreciate the sentiments for my birthday thank you you were here oh. thank you Ms. Walker um, Miss O'Kelly, Clerk O'Kelly, please. Yes, first of all, I would like to thank Nutrition Services for these awesome bulletin yes. boards yes. decorating our boardroom. Thank you. I see you take lots of pictures. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to mention the heat. I hope everybody uh, is it's nicer now, but if it, three, four days ago, it was 118 100 to 120 degrees here in Rialto. And uh, you could easily fry an egg on the sidewalk. <laughs> I should have tried it, but I, I know we could have. Um, I also wanted to talk a little bit about, if those of us have been following the news, uh, the cave rescue of the 12 boys in, in Thailand, which really captured my attention because the idea of 12 young men just dying was, was you know, not allowed. Um, but some things you may not have known. Of course, it was a, a high-risk situation from the start, and they were, continued to have heavy rains, which continued you know, to bring more water into the caves. Uh, so some of the boys did not know how to swim, and the whole group was greatly weakened because they had, at that point, been uh, without food or water for nine days. Um, it, so it was a very challenging situation, and God bless the Navy SEALs and everybody else who came out to help. Um, the Thai teams of Navy SEALs, divers, and doctors, and volunteers played an instrumental role, but they were not alone. And of the 90 divers that were involved, 50 of them were foreigners. Heroes from around the, jo uh, the world jumped to help the dangerous operation. One Thai Navy SEAL made the ultimate sacrifice. He risked his life taking oxygen in for the kids to be able to get them out, but he ran out of oxygen. And he knew he was gonna run out of oxygen because when you dive, you know that. So he knew it was a suicide mission. And, um, but the, the mission was successful thanks to the efforts of everyone. To me, the Thailand Cave Rescue demonstrates the beauty and effectiveness of compassion and global unity. People everywhere want to help people. Sometimes it may not seem like it, but they do. And thank goodness they do, because we all need each other. Thank you. Thank you, Puerto Kelly. Vice President Montez, please. Thank you, Board President Mr. Martinez. Uh, welcome, everybody here tonight um thank you for coming on uh, one of the very uh, loneliest and hopefully shortest <laughs> school board meetings <laughs> of the year um i'd like to thank dr uh, avila um i always wanted to write a book <laughs> <laughs> i think um i'll title this confessions of a school board member <laughs> We may not, not be, want to read that. <laughs> I'll publish it later, way, way, <laughs> way later. Memoirs. Um, but uh, thank you. Um, hopefully, uh, I, I, I didn't, I don't always get an opportunity to leave work, but if I do get one tomorrow, I'd like to stop in. 
So um, thank you for everyone who's participating in that. We know that um, everyone's got a lot of things or that they'd rather do to spend their time, but um, whenever uh, the district comes together for um, bettering ourselves as a district, uh, as, a, as, a organ, as an organism, like you said, uh, I think um, you should be commended. So thank you, everyone involved with that. Um, I do want to thank everyone over at the PDC. Uh, what was it, June 29th? I had the opportunity to uh, attend the um, adult. The adult Lanzate y Triunfa uh, program. Adult program. Academy mm -hmm. uh, graduation. Um, that was really uh, that was really nice, and um, I'd like to see more uh, more of that, uh, more of those programs in, in in our district. I want to also just. Um, I look forward to the summer school graduations uh, that will be held at Carter. Did you already give a date? It's July 9th. Uh, Thursday. July 19th. Next week. And then there's another event um, that will also be during the day that, uh, that I've got on my schedule, keeping our kids safe and healthy. That'll be. The safety department. Yeah. That'll be held by the safety department. Um, I've attended similar events in the past and the safety department always does an awesome job uh, with the events they do so hopefully I can make it out to that and everybody else um, I want to keep this meeting short so I'll shut up <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you vice president Montez you know I with this it, it really got me to thinking and I just wanted to share what's always been on my heart the reason I ran for school board member was to take care of our people, the staff, so they can free up their mind and their concerns to take care of our youth. That hasn't changed. So whatever goes on in a day, I know the rest of this board has the same heart. So um, that just carry that forward. Always remember that, that we care for you it's not by chance that you're here. You're here to do a job, come alongside us. And I thank you for the job you were doing. So let's continue. Oh, Dr. Robert. Just one more thing. I know it's been a team effort. There's a committee on the calendar, the schedule that you have for those that have put together the last two days. They've worked very hard for the past two, three months uh, putting this together. Uh, Saida, Ricardo behind the scenes have done a lot of the logistical a pieces along with Edith here but I wanted to share that because the uh, journal here was Edith's baby uh, she helped research it find it uh, and with Ricardo designed it but this was really her product so I wanted to acknowledge her for the work that she's been working on this uh, journal so thank you I, I have a thank question you. were you at home stamping leather when <laughs> you're here no, I didn't thank you the, the paper reminds me of the paper we used in grade school. Uh -huh. <laughs> I remember drawing yeah. a cow on one of these. You and I are old enough nope. to remember that, Joe. <laughs> it, it was this color. That's yeah, okay. After our trip to Chino, we went on a field trip. <laughs> cool. okay. I did notice that one of our uh, associations did come in. Um, so Communication Workers of America, would you like any time at the mic? Welcome. Oh, hello. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> I've had a long day today, and so I'm kind of thinking of being just short and saying, uh, hope you all had a nice, comfortable summer. I know mine's been kind of hot. I've been getting it from a lot of different people. I'm sorry I missed the uh, event that went on today, and I'm going to miss it tomorrow because I'm in meetings. I'm beginning to hate meetings. But then again, when I come here, I get a lot of laughing, so it's beneficial. Yes. Thank you very much, and you have a good summer. You too. Thank you. <clears throat> President Martinez, we had one more. Okay, good. Celia Sarabia. Welcome.
Buenas noches, miembros de la mesa directiva. Good evening, Buenas members noches. of the board. Presidente Mr. Martínez. President Mr. Martínez. Vicepresidente Mr. Montes. Vice President Mr. Montes. Superintendente Dr. Ávila. Superintendent Dr. Ávila. Audiencia. And audience. Soy Celia Sarabia. I am Celia Sarabia. Y represento Amigos Unidos. And I represent Amigos Unidos. Grupo de apoyo para padres de niños especiales. A support group of parents uh, for um, children with special needs. Y esta noche queremos agradecerles Tonight we want to thank you. al superintendente Dr. Ávila, al vicepresidente Mr. Montes, Mr. Montes a Ms. Bridget Ely, Ms. directora de Educación Especial, Bridget Ely, um, Special Education Director, a Ms. Saida Jaffrey Hernández, Ms. Saida Jaffrey Hernández y a la, a la señora Rhea MacGyver. Uh, Disculpe mi pronunciación. Forgive me for my pronunciation of your name. <laughs> por haber participado en la ceremonia de graduación for having participated in our graduation ceremony de los niños especiales for our special children en una escuela MPS. In an MPS school. Muchas gracias por su presencia. Thank you so much for your presence. Por incluir a los niños que están en escuelas MPS. And for including uh, children who uh, attend MPS schools porque son parte del distrito. Because they are also part of the district. Esperamos que el próximo año participe toda la junta directiva. Uh, we hope that next year the entire board will participate. También felicitar a la señora del Nutrition. Also congratulate the lady from Nutrition. Eh, eh, he oído muy buenos comentarios de lo que es trabajo que ellas están haciendo. I have heard so many good comments about the work that they are doing. Y es muy bueno escuchar todo eso en nuestro distrito. And it's really good to hear all of those good things in our district. Poquito a poco, pero vamos caminando bien. Little by little, but we're uh, walking well. Gracias y que tengan un verano feliz y seguro. Thank you and have a happy and safe summer. <laughs> Okay, um, we are on D, public hearing. Move open. to open public hearing. Thank you. Second. Way ahead of me, as usual. Any person wishing to speak on the item on the public hearing agenda will be granted three minutes. Do we have any, Dr. Robert? We have none. Okay. The public hearing is notice of consideration of, of approving an increase in statutory level one school fees imposed on new residential and commercial industrial construction pursuant to government code section 65995 and ed code section 17620. Okay, since we have no one to uh, comment, does the board have any comment? All for it. Okay. <laughs> Vote by board members. Aye. 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 Thank Aye. you. Uh, motion and second to close Move public, to close public second. hearing. Thank second. you. Vote by board members. Aye. 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 Thank you. Consel consent calendar items. All items on the consent calendar will be acted upon in one motion unless pulled by board of education members or the superintendent for individual action. Can I have a motion and Move. a second? Move to approve the consent calendar. Okay, these are reference items E through J. Can I have a second, second. please? Thank you. Okay, do we have any polls or discussion? Not tonight. Uh, <laughs> it, it seems we want to get out of here. Where are you going, Nancy? <laughs> <laughs> she said uh, she wants G2, H5, <laughs> I8. <laughs> Oops. Okay. Vote by board members. Aye. Aye. Okay. We are on item K, page six, discussion action items. A motion and a second, please. So moved. Second. Thank you. Item K1, renew the agreement with McGraw-Hill Education for 12,800 licenses for the online assessment and learning in knowledge spaces, Alex, program for students in grades six through 12. Effective August 1st, 2018 through June 30th, 2019, at a cost of $230,016 uh, to be paid from the general fund. Questions, comments? Yes, Ms. O'Kelly. Um, just wondering how is it used by every single teacher at every single grade level for, ma uh, for math or? I'll ask Dr. D'Souza to give us some information I on can this just tell or? you what I know and that is that we do use it K-12 in our mathematical classrooms and when I walk into classrooms teachers are they barely value this piece kids are engaged and it's our major intervention in the oh, area okay. of mathematics 
Okay, thank you. Anything else? Anyone else? All righty. Uh, vote by board members. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Motion and a second on K2. Move to approve K2. Second. Second. Thank you. K2 is to award RFP number C189-003 to Gold Star for the purchase of snack food and beverages as part of the Pomona Valley Co-op purchasing group for the 2018-2019 school year. The cost of items purchased from this bid will be paid from Fund 13 Cafeteria Special Reserve Fund. Questions or comments? Seeing none, vote by board members. Aye. 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 Thank, Aye. thank you. Um, motion and a second on K3, please. Move to approve K3. Second. Thank you. K3 is toward RFP Ryan's 2018-19-003, pizza products to Papa John's Pizza for the 2018-2019 school year. The cost of future items purchased from this bid will be paid from Fund 13, Cafeteria Special Ed Reserve Fund. Questions or comments? Okay, vote by board members. Aye. 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 One Aye. no. Okay, one no. I don't like Papa John's. <laughs> I'm just grateful for pizza. <laughs> Next time, bring another pizza place. Okay, moving on. K4, motion and a second, please. So moved. Second. Thank you. K4 is to approve an agreement with PCH Architects, LLP, to provide architectural services required for the conversion of two classrooms in Building R at Eisenhower High School for the physical education program, effective July 12th, 2018 through December 31st, 2019 at a cost not to exceed $87,500, including $2,000 allowance for design alteration of existing band room and $3,000 allowance for reimbursable expenses for division of the state architect DSA requirements as needed to be paid from Measure Y, Series C, General Obligation Bonds, Fund 21. Questions or comments? Seeing none, vote by board members. Aye. 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 Motion and a second on K5, please. So moved. Second. Thank you. K5 is to adopt resolution number 18-1901 to adopt statutory school fees imposed on residential and commercial industrial development projects in the amount of $3.79 per square foot of accessible space of single family detached residential development and 61 cents per square foot of all commercial industrial development within the boundaries of the district, effective 60 days from the date of this resolution. Questions or comments? Yes, Ms. O'Kelly, Clerk O'Kelly. Uh, just wondering what we are currently paying. I'm the current rate for residential is $3.48, uh, for commercial zero uh, 56 cents. So it's going up about 30 cents for the yes. residential. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Any other comments or questions? Okay. Seeing none, vote by board members. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Aye. Okay. Motion and a second to adopt K6. So moved. Second. Thank you. K6 is to adopt resolution number 18-19-02. Excusing the absence of board member Dina Walker from the Wednesday, June 27, 2018, regular meeting of the Board of Education. Questions, comments, recusals? Recused. Okay, one recusal from Ms. Walker. Seeing no, no other comments or hands, uh, vote by board members. Aye. 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 With one recusal or abstention. Mm -hmm. Move to approve K7. My hand's not fast enough to, to oh, write sorry. in there. That's okay. Um, <laughs> a motion and a second on K7, please. Do we have a motion? Did so move. Second. Thank uh, you. Okay. okay, K7 is to approve the name change of Rialto Alternative Education 
Toronto Adult School at a cost of $5,000 for new signage to be paid from Adult Education Fund. Questions or comments? Ms. O'Kelly, Clerk O'Kelly, I'm sorry. I just want to add that I heartily approve yes. of this because Rialto Alternative Education doesn't really tell what we're doing there. So I like exactly. Rialto Adult School better. Yes. About that time. <laughs> okay, uh, any other comments? Okay, seeing none, vote by board members. Aye. 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 Thank you. A motion and a second on K-8. So moved. Second. Thank you. K-8 is to ratify an agreement between San Bernardino Community College District and the district's adult education program, allowing the district to continue in as, ac as an active member of the AB 104 AEBG consortium and receive an allotment of $924,470 from July 1st, 2018 through December 31st, 2019. Okay, um, questions, comments? Do they honestly think we would vote down a chance to get $924,000? <laughs> Good comment. <laughs> I, I do wonder what AEBG consortium is. Adult Education it's Block Grant. Grant. Okay, Block Grant, thank you. Okay, any other questions or comments? Seeing none, vote by board members. Aye. 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 Thank you. Motion a second on K-9, please. So moved. Second. Thank you. K-9 is to accept the Specialized Secondary Programs Grant for Rialto High School, Cohort 4, Year 1 Implementation in the amount of $110,000 from the California Department of Education for the Leading Edge Analytical Decision Innovation in Rialto, uh. Leader IIR, Lead Ear, from June 1st, 2018 through June 30th, 2019. Questions, comments? Comment? Yes, sir. Regarding Rialto High School, um, are we getting that stadium fixed yet, the one that was damaged by fire? The bleachers. Uh, they were yes, burned. yes. When? Uh, last, do you mind? Welcome, an update on it, please. Uh, good evening, President Martinez, Dr. Avila, and board members. Uh, Les Alexander, um, Director of Maintenance and Operations. Uh, this project has been delayed, but we are working with the uh, insurance company and the DSA uh, inspector and facilities to make the necessary repairs. The um, structure uh, was damaged, and so the, so were the bleachers. So the question was whether the bleachers could just be regalvanized and we could move forward with the repair, or if a structural repair was going to take place. So um, it had to be turned over to the, um, to the insurance company and they engaged a structural engineer and then they had to take it to DSA. So uh, the last I heard, um, Derek Harris was working with um, the insurance company and the inspector to see which the next steps were in the process. Um, the football stadium is still able to function. It's just that one section of bleachers is not available for the visitor section. It, and it, this happened how long ago? It happened, uh, it'll be one year next month. Um, but as with a fire and, you know, there's, yes. there's um, so many hoops to jump through with the insurance yeah, agent. We, we've got uh, Mr. Harris here as well. Mr. I'll let Alexander. Derek take over. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> good evening. It wasn't, um, good evening, board. It wasn't immediately known that it was going to be a project that was going to come under the jurisdiction of DSA, seeing as though it doesn't have walls and it doesn't have a roof. So there was some going back and forth to determine whether DSA was going to take jurisdiction over it. One can, can you clarify DSA for the public? Please? Division of State Architecture. Yes, yeah, so it's a state agency. Once they made the determination that they were going to indeed um, uh, have jurisdiction over this project, you know that requires um, their approval and they have a very lengthy process. Mm -hmm. um, we did file an appeal and we asked for a special approvement and uh, Mrs. Chu, our facilities planning director, assisted us and the insurance company with filing an appeal um, that we could um, be waived off and have certain issues that were triggered because it became a DSA project. It triggered path of travel mm -hmm. issues 
So now we are dealing with path of travel issues in addition to the damaged um, bleachers. Uh, Tuesday of this week, which was today, I'm sorry, yesterday, um, the uh, architect went there to uh, begin the work to try and map out the path of travel issues and try to minimize um, the impact um, onto the project for that. So they're going to be doing a study, which is a survey, and we'll get that within the next two weeks. That'll determine the amount of additional work that will need to be done on the path of travel issues before they'll allow us to address the bleacher issue. So as, as uh, Les uh, alluded to, um, it's unsightly and it's been lengthy. However, the stadium is usable um, on both sides, just that one section on that half is not usable. So yeah. that section is the foundation and the structure is sound or has that been found out yet? <coughs> That's what they're right. investigating. Right, right. So, so the, the structure is, is sound. They've, they've come to the point where they know the degree of damage. So they've already determined that. It's, you know, we've got to order parts that may come all the way from back east so that may take some time plus we've got to relocate a storage unit that was being utilized under the bleachers which is what fueled the fire to begin mm -hmm. with so those things have got to be relocated and then the path to travel issues but yes the half of the um, visitor side bleachers that are undamaged are sound okay it's it's, it's yes. still strange that it's taking a whole year just to get where we are. Yeah, I mean, in the meantime, it's sitting there unsightly, which, number one, can encourage more vandalism, and number two, probably is going to make the team lose because they'll be demoralized. <laughs> <laughs> well, the damage is on the visitor side, so uh, our home but team... They, but they still have to... <laughs> they, but the home team has to look at it. <laughs> Yes, and, 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 and most of it is because of the DSA part uh, between that and the architect. Is it a DSA project or not? Once we got that final ruling, then, you know, we hung our heads down, but then we did the appeal process. We thought we had it, um, uh, but in the end, they cited a rule that says that they have to have jurisdiction over it, but they did limit the amount of the um, upgrades that the district has to invest in. Every so. time I hear DSA, it's bad. <laughs> it has been. <laughs> mm -hmm. yes. Well, we appreciate uh, all the hard work, and um, hopefully it'll get resolved as soon as possible yeah. um, for the betterment of the students and the staff over there and the community in general. Yes. Um, you know, it's something that a lot of people think when they call us and they ask us or they call the staff and they ask the staff or the staff themselves want to know why it hasn't it been taken care of yet. It's just a small little fire but you know um agencies have to come in take a look at it insurances have to come to play and um we'll just continue to inform everyone to be patient and uh keep up the good work appreciate yeah. it yeah we'll get there yes. it's tedious okay thank you thank you uh, and, and for the public dsa uh, division of state architecture typical uh, turnaround time has been a year in this person's experience so uh. um that is part of the, the hold up okay um we are back on the leader. Let me reread it. K-9, accept the specialized secondary programs grant for Rialto High School Cohort 4, year one implementation in the amount of $110,000 from the California Department of Education for the leading edge analytical decision innovation in Rialto, the leader, from June 1st, 2018 through June 30th, 2019. Are we ready to vote? Yes. Vote by board members. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, motion and a second on K-10, please. So moved. Second. Thank you. K-10 is to approve the recommendations of the administrative hearing panel on case number 171870. And vote by board members. Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, the next regular meeting of the Board of Education of the Rialto Unified School District will be held on Wednesday, August 8th at 7 p.m. at the Dr. John R. Casalunas Education Center, 182 East Walnut Avenue, Rialto, California. 
materials distributed or presented to the Board of Education at the board meeting are available upon request from the superintendent's office. Motion to adjourn. President Martinez, yes, before we adjourn, I just had a recollection of an article I read earlier today, which Please has triggered the need to ask a couple of questions. Absolutely. So if I can ask uh, Fassad to approach the podium. So the contract for Papa John's, we do have, there are other options? Yes. Okay. The contract with Papa John's, does it bound us for one full year or can we cancel the contract at any time? Do we know? Yeah, I think uh, if we can cancel it, but this is a piggyback. Uh, the, the, uh, we are just, uh, we don't have to go to the bidding process. Mm -hmm. So if board, uh, we still f explore other, other provider, we can, uh, we can do that. The, the reason I'm asking. Okay. Into the microphone, please. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me ask that. Okay, let me. This is actually this Papa John Pizza is not a picky bank bid. Actually, we went out to bid. There was Domino Pizza. There was um, Pizza Art, um and Papa John. So, um, and we have different criteria required by the USDA. So after all this was done, and then we had a blind test done, test test done at Rialto High School. We oh, the kids taste yeah, it? Yeah, the, okay. the kids pick the, the kids pick up the Papa John pizza, and we have all the documentation for that. Yes, um, name is my name is Maria Rangel, Maria Rangel, and uh, and um, yes, we do it for it's the contract is for one year, the bid is for one year. We could always extend it if we're not happy with their service, their customer service, or their food. We could go again for bid next year. My main concern is that the students cho choose yeah. the yes. one they want, the yes. ma vast yes. majority, and yeah. we get that one. Yeah. Yes. And, and please Mike. don't don't take it personal. Uh, uh, sometimes um, these contracts, these bids, come up for board approval. Uh, if anybody questions the uh, the bid or the vendor, don't think that it has anything to do against anybody. You know, from your guys' department or your staff. Um, not like that. Not, that's not why I was. That's not why I voted it down. But my my reason, you know, I choose not to disclose why. But did you want to share what you read? Or? Well, I still need an answer to my question. Are we bound for a full year, or can we cancel the contract with the thirty? You can't just cancel the contract. We have to stay for one year. Okay. Unless, but, but we unless could have a second vendor, could we not? Um, <laughs> the, the may I, uh, the I apologize it I, I my response was incorrect. It was it was that we went through the formal bidding process. Mm -hmm. So the on the public bid con contract rules and guidelines, since we bid the project, we are we have to keep the uh, service for one year. Okay. Uh, but unless there's a cause for termination, if there's a reason the service or their food product is not. Uh, is not meet the standard, then we have a cause. So uh, if there's no cause, we are stuck, uh, as Dr. Abel was asking for, uh, we're stuck for, yeah, we're, we're, we're stuck for a year. Yes. But with cause, we could, we could terminate the uh, contract, yes. Yeah, this is a whole contract we have, and they have to abide what the contract is, and we also have to. So if it's for different good. criteria that, uh, that they have to abide to, and if one of them is broken, then yeah. We could cancel within the year. I mean, any time during the year. So what I'll do is I'll Your look problems. into this, and the reason I brought this up is because earlier today I read an article where the CEO of Papa John's used the N-word during a conference call. And that's mm. why I, I voted it down. Oh, my God. So well, my question. <coughs> we look into some of the criteria, and if one of them, we could cancel them. Down. Well, <laughs> yeah. it would be for the board. <laughs> It would be for the board to decide, but yeah. I would want to present whatever information we have yeah. as an option mm -hmm. so that if the board reconsiders now that it's been approved, uh, then that'll be up to the board to, yeah. to decide. Um, the student chose Papa John. Uh, and it was right. a blind test test, and it was a lot of students. Do I have a motion or any comment as to whether to reconsider this item? Or do we want to wait until we... 
I, I would just say that uh, I know we've already we've already um, authorized it from this point, but if um, for f just for our due diligence, um, Superintendent, if you can go back and kind of research some other mm -hmm. and bring that back to us, yes. um, just from the standpoint of you know what that what is that saying for us and our students and our mm -hmm. faculty. That's right. So yeah. if you can do that yes. and figure out what our our options are our based options on the and contract and whether cause would yes. fall that statement would fall under cause, not consistent with our uh, yes. policies. Yes. Absolutely. Not, not to comment here. Not too long ago, Texaco had some issues with hiring practices. And after it was brought to their attention, the very next day those practices were changed. Therefore, I would suggest maybe we, somebody in our district could write a letter to that CEO or that person who made that comment. Or not give them business. Ask them to and repent. give them an opportunity to, to make things right. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, not because we're trying to show bouldering, but that's, I think that would say a lot. And if they don't even answer us, well, that's my point. If they don't even answer us, that says a lot too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Excellent point. We'll look into it. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, Dr. Avila, for bringing it up. Thank you, board. Okay, we are now entertaining a motion and a second for adjournment. So move. Oh, second. Thank you. Vote by board members. Aye. Aye. Time is 7.56.